Bro, good to see you. Yes, sir, man. How you feeling? Thank you for coming so quick. What's up, man? It's a proper handshake. What's up with y'all? What y'all working on? Man, don't even tell me. We got a special surprise for you, bro. For real. Thank you for coming, man. Let's have a seat. Let's get right into it. Let's start talking, man. How have you been, man? It's been a while since we connected. When was the last time? I think it was South Africa? Yeah, man. Randomly running with each other, uh, drunk in the club, having a good time, right? See, that's always an example of... uh, where music can take you. Right. You right, know what I mean? Because right. when I see someone, I'm like, wait a minute, how did you get here? And we have to just have Same that moment. Thing, right. That was cool. That's one thing about music that I love so much is the experience that it can give you. Um, just the places, like you said, it can take you, man. That's the best mm. part of it. Man, so you got this new single, uh, Yams, that just dropped. Yes, you want to talk a little bit about it? Who was it produced by? We got Devin Morrison. Mm. You know, I'm always telling people I have cool friends. <laughs> and that's kind of what I wanted to do. Like, I. I have him, the first verse on the song is Devin Morrison. Mm. Cause I, I think back when I met him like three years ago, we were just bonding over nerdy music things, travel and women. And it started off with a joke and me vlogging on, you know, different social medias about it. And then it turned into an actual record. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? I think that's cool just because um, it felt like Thanksgiving. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. And I was like, I was praying. I was like, yo God, I, I saw you do it for Mariah Carey. <laughs> you know, like I want, Every year, people to play this song for That's Thanksgiving. Fact. You know what I mean? That's so fact. That's incredible, man. Congratulations on that release, by the way. Thank you, man. Uh, also, man, big congrats. Uh, it's been a big year. I mean, you had a production on CLB. Yes, sir. How did that come about? I think it just starts off with the people in his team just have their ear to the streets. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I think they tried to flip certain samples, and then everybody in the room was like, yo, Masego really did this a certain way. Right, right, right. And it kind of brought the conversation to my camp. I mean, I never even knew it would work out the way it did, honestly. Because, I mean, you know, when it comes to working on an album, there's so many things that are made, but right. is, is, really, is right. it coming out? It's all about purpose, right? Having a purposeful uh, mm. part of the creation process that, you know, has to exactly. you know, all the way go through, man. Uh, it's incredible, man. Congrats on that. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm very happy, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it, it funded this chain. <laughs> you know, and big ups to you, man. You got the engineers thing right. popping. Right. Like, you know, you're making my investment do very well. Come on, man. I appreciate you being a part. Um, I love like, community, seriously. It's like, 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 we talk about the community aspect, yeah, yeah. right? You know, me coming up in my field of business when it comes to audio engineering, you know, mm-hmm. people that look like me or, you know, where I come from, you know, don't really always Correct. get those opportunities. I don't have that foot in the door when it comes to being able to go to music schools and mm-hmm. things like that. So, you know, I always told myself, um, once I you know, reach a certain height. Um, yeah. I want to give back to those diamonds in the rough. That's true. Um, you know, uh, people that were like me that didn't have resources, um, didn't have, you know, opportunity, didn't have network, you know, and I wanted to be able to provide that for them. Yeah. And again, thanks to you, uh, EQT, and, and everybody involved to invest, you know, you guys seeing the problem that we're trying to fix and could be more grateful, you know. That's how we're able yeah. to sit here today and talk about this, you know. I don't know, it's just cool to be able to be a part of your future growth. 100%. You know 100%. what I'm saying? So I'm super honored. And, um, yeah, I can't wait to see what it does. Because community, and I think relationships is what really got all of us to where we're at. Right, right. You know, relationships are cool. worth more than money. That's, you know, yeah. that's the new currency, for yeah. real. Man, and also, uh, yeah, congrats, man, being the face. You know, we had the Dolby Atmos partnership with engineers, but, you know, you're the face of the Apple Music uh, Dolby Atmos campaign. Appreciate it. Um, you know, you want to just get a little bit into just talking about Dolby Atmos mixes. So before we get into that, I want to hear in your words, right. basic, what is a mix? Great question. Basic to me, a mix is being able to take every element of a song, um, the production from the producer, the vocals from the artist, mm-hmm. um, and mixing them together adding certain effects when it comes to reverb, uh, EQing elements out and frequencies out to make everything really flow together in a way where it's seamless. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you're working with multiple layers of textures and different, different different sounds inside of a song, sometimes when you throw that into a song, it could just sound like a brick of music. Yeah. But when you're mixing a song, you're able to cut out respective pockets for every individual sound inside of that song mm-hmm. to make it all live and, and, and live together. Yeah. Just again, bouncing back to you, what you know, as an as an artist, you know, how does a mix kind of affect your world? How do you feel about getting a mix? That's a good question. I, I think that a mix is something that I understand when I perform. Mm. Right? When those records hit those larger speakers and certain frequencies connect to the audience, I'm like, that's because I had it mixed a certain mm. way. I know when I used to play my records at uh, other people's studios, you know, just press and play. Some speakers would just point out such imperfections in my music that I'm just like, wow, why did it sound great on my speakers? Right, right, right. So it made me start researching what a proper mix is. And I mean, hearing your definition of it, it all kind of cohesively makes sense. Right. Where when you really break everything down and carve those pockets out, 
I as an artist feel the effects of that when I play it in different like venues and different speakers. So right. it, it just comes down to that. It's like it, it's almost this big mathematical equation and also just this you're a producer as well because you're really taking this piece of music and creating some art for other people to kind of enjoy and interpret. So, And that's kind of how I look at it too. Like you said, a piece of art. You know, I look at when I'm working on a song as, you know, a song is a blank canvas. Yeah. Right? So being able to add effects like EQ or compression or reverb delays, that's me painting on it. You know, so you're able to really put that song together sonically mm -hmm. to create that sonic vision for the artist. You know, this, this analogy yeah. that I talk about when creating records with an artist, you know, the artists know where they want to go. The artist is the one mm. sitting with a map, right? But it's yeah. on the engineer to take them there sonically. You know, and that should be, you know, the relationship between the artist and the engineer, you know? That's good. That's a good metaphor. Yeah. So with Dolby Atmos, how do you feel that that is extending that art form? I'm just having more access. You know, with Dolby Atmos, instead of listening to, you know, songs in stereo where I'm just left and right, you know, I'm being able to yeah. be immersed in the song. I'm sitting in the song where the whole room is my palette at this at this point. Yeah. You know, being able to place objects and instruments and vocals and everything around you in a way where you can really feel the song live and alive. You know, that experience is how, you know, as a creator, I can run wild with that concept, you know? You gotta think from 1969 when it was just one speaker, when everybody was mixing in mono. You know, that's when 69, when Sgt. Peppers came out, you know, one of the last mono albums, right? When it transitioned to stereo, it gave their listeners a whole new experience by listening to things to left and right. Yes. This is just an evolution of that. You know, we've been living in stereo for so long. Now that's gone. You know, you're able to have a song with two, three hundred tracks breathe in a way like none before. You know, because instead of it, again, left and right, it's on top of you, it's to the right of you, it's behind you. You know, and that experience, that way to create is something that is exciting. It's Even though it is immersive. It, very immersive, you know, yeah. in, in every aspect of that word. And, you know, obviously this is the early time for Adobe Atmos and music, but I think it's the beginning of something very great. I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. I really feel like when I heard my own music presented back to me in that way, I felt like I was more of an artist because I got to express really what, when I was creating, the, the fans could kind of receive that, right. if you know what I'm saying. Right. Because right. I'm always thinking of music as this room, because it started with the jam session anyway. So you have musicians all around the room, but then when it gets back in the mix, it's just these, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So, so imagine yeah. the experience, sorry to cut you off like that. It gets me so excited because it's, you can now take that back to that feeling to when you really had that jam session. You For know, sure. Sitting in the middle of the room with the drums behind you and the bass to the left of you and, you know, the keys in front of you, you know, you're able to really reenact that, that experience. But instead of you doing it live, you're doing it for the listeners, wherever they're at, you know? Well said. Like there's a lot of products that enable um, you know, Atmos uh, playback. You got the sound bar, um, you know, you got yeah. the binaural headphones, mm -hmm. um, you know, and a lot more other products. I think over a billion products uh, allow you to listen to songs in Dolby Atmos. So again, it's just, you know, it's an interesting time for music in general, you know, things like you mm -hmm. said, technology, how technology is driving everything. The fact that now we have that in the music industry and we have that just for the creators. Um, it's an exciting time to say the least. I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. So essentially, how do young creatives get into Atmos? Right, right. What you got? You know, the barrier entry for mixing in Adobe Atmos uh, is fairly simple. You know, just yeah. ba having basic knowledge of, of, of the DAW that you work in, whether it's Pro Tools, um, you know, yeah. Logic, which is now the new version of Logic, comes with Adobe Atmos render inside the DAW. That is true. That's very, you know what I'm saying? So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's more accessible than ever. Mm -hmm. um, but thanks to the collaboration that we did with Adobe Atmos and engineers, mm -hmm. you know, we are now enabled with the curriculum to actually train the up and coming community yeah, on curriculum. the best ways to, to mix in this format. Yeah. You know, engineers is, 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 is the platform we have, you know, upwards of 10,000 engineers waiting to be onboarded in the sense that we have the community. You know, these people want the information. They want the knowledge on how they can take their business to the next levels. Yeah. And thanks to this collaboration, we're able to do just that. So, you know, the, I would say for the creators looking to be enabled in Adobe Atmos, uh, sign up for engineers. And then, you know, we will give you the training you need to succeed. That's easy. Yeah. It's good. Very simple. So enough talking about Adobe Atmos. Uh, oh, we got a surprise for you. you yeah. know, we connected with Josh Goodwin, your mixing engineer. Uh, we have a version of Yams mixing Adobe Atmos that we would love to play for you. For real? 100%. What's well, where it at? Come on, man. Check it out. Okay. So we got the incredible Pink Gonzalez uh, running the rig. Um, he's What he's going to do is in A and B, the regular stereo mix okay. compared to the Adobe Atmos mix. So you can really feel the difference of really being immersed uh, in your own song. Fantastic. You know? So let's check it out. 
So you're gonna notice everything is up front. Crazy though. A little on the roof. Yeah, that's the best part about it. Is you're able to not just get the surround sound, but you get everything above it as well. That's, that's you know, new. So you pull it, like I said, imagine the whole song just being immersed. You know what I'm saying? You're right side. Like this little bottom. <laughs> just feel it. Yeah. It's all in front of you. It's up top. You definitely hit over there. And that was a music video. Yeah, get over the top. It's crazy. Yeah, hearing the ad libs right here is crazy. That's nuts. It's got a whole bridge. This song long as hell. It's just bass in that speaker. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's that whole experience, being able to like fully be immersed in the song. You know? Yes, sir. When you're going back from stereo to Atmos, you're only hearing the stereo mix up front. Yeah. You know, and you can also hear, you're not getting that depth. It sounds like a brick of music, right? It did. But when it busts open, you're able to fully feel like there's air to breathe. The song is breathing. It's living at this point. Yeah. And that's the best part about it. You're able to experience that shit for the first time just like that, dog. It's fucking incredible. It's this canvas. Excuse my language. <laughs> <laughs> it's the canvas. It's, it's the jam session we spoke about. It's the jam session, you know, and that is, room. you know, once this is fully just accessible to everybody through the engineers platform, you're gonna fully, everyone's gonna be able to have this experience, right? Yes. And that's gonna just take the whole listening experience to another level. Like I said, this is still the early stages of Dolby Atmos. Think about five years from now where this is gonna go. Wow. Right? When it comes to cars, when it comes to over all of these uh, devices that can play back on it. And just being a creator, imagine what kind of creative tool is going to be created yeah. just for this format. So wow. we're, in, we're in an exciting time, man. And, you know, we're grateful to be at the forefront of it, my boy. Ah. Yes, sir. Shout out to you, my brother, again. Shout out to Masego. Don't forget to get his new single, Yams, out everywhere right now, produced by Devin Morrison. Yes, sir. Hey, don't forget to get your songs mixed on engineers.com. Let's go. Shout out to Dolby. Love. Yes, sir. Can I get to the end?